Here in chapters 8 and 9, Matthew gives us a compilation of miracles that Jesus performed. And it's a very small sampling of the miracles Jesus performed. It, it is in no way an exhaustive list of all of his miracles. It's not even close. Uh, in fact, John's gospel tells us that if all the miracles Jesus performed were all written down, that the world would not be able to contain the books that would be written. So we're, we're just given a little taste of the miracles of Jesus. And the miracles that Matthew includes in these two chapters, they show us Jesus' deity, that he's God, and his messiahship, that he's the messiah of Israel that was promised in the Old Testament. And, and just as a review, if you remember at the beginning of chapter 8, uh, Matthew, the first miracle that Matthew mentioned back in chapter 8 was the cleansing of a leper, uh, which was one of the three specific messianic miracles that Jesus performed, if you remember when we talked about that. We also saw in chapters 8 and 9 that Jesus healed every manner of sickness and disease. He calmed the storm on the Sea of Galilee. He cast out demons. He forgave sins. And then last week in our study was, was the pinnacle of his miracles. He raised a person back to life. He raised someone from the dead. So through his miracles, Jesus demonstrated that he has authority over sickness and disease. He has authority over nature. He has authority over the demonic realm. He has the, the authority to forgive sins and even authority over death. And so these teachings and miracles that Matthew presents in his gospel give us clear proof that Jesus is who he claimed to be. That he is God incarnate and that he is the Messiah of Israel. There's a wonderful verse in the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verse 31, that says, listen to this. Many of the people believed in him and said, when the Christ comes, will he do more signs than these which this man has done. People were saying, hey, when the Messiah comes, will he do more than Jesus has done? I, I mean, do we need any more proof than this? He's doing everything the Messiah is supposed to do. He's got to be the Messiah. Now, the next miracle that Matthew includes in this compilation is the healing of two blind men. Look at verse 27. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. Now, the Son of David, that's a messianic title. That's a title for the Messiah from the Old Testament, 2 Samuel chapter 7. If you're taking notes there in 2 Samuel 7, God promised King David that one of his descendants would sit upon the throne and rule and reign forever. The son of David is a messianic title. Now, why does Matthew include this miracle at this point? He includes this miracle, the healing of two blind men at this point, to say even the blind could see that Jesus is the Messiah. It was that obvious that even the blind could see that Jesus is the Messiah of Israel. Now, they only heard about his many miracles. They, they didn't see them, obviously, and just from hearing about his miracles, they were convinced Jesus is the Messiah. And these two blind men knew that the Messiah would give sight to the blind. How did they know that? From the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 35, verses 4 and 5 say, Say to those who are fearful hearted, be strong, do not fear. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with recompense. He will come and save you. Then God comes the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. And so the Bible says the Messiah will open the eyes of the blind. And so these two blind men cried out, son of David. Have mercy on us. And it says in verse 28, and when Jesus had come into the house, that's probably probably Peter's house there in Capernaum, where Jesus was living while he was in Capernaum. As he came into the house, the blind men came to him. They, they just followed Jesus right into the house. They didn't knock. <laughs> you know, they just let themselves in. 
And Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? And they said to him, yes, Lord. And then he touched their eyes, saying, according to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were open. And the first thing they saw was the face of Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful? I don't know about you, but I look forward to heaven and seeing the face of Jesus Christ. You know, this person that we have loved and followed and lived for during our time here on earth to finally see him face to face and to see the nail prints in his hand, to see the scars on his brow from the, the crown of thorns, to see the marks in his body from his death on the cross to save us when he died for our sins. Uh, you know, the, the marks in his body from the crucifixion are going to be the only things in heaven that are man-made. The price that he paid for us to redeem us and to save us. And one day we'll see him face to face if you put your trust in him. And so verse 30 goes on, their eyes were open and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, see that no one knows it, but when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. I, I love this. <laughs> it's hard not to tell people what Jesus has done for you. Especially if he has just radically worked in your life and has done great things for you. You know, we're all we're all born blind spiritually. Everyone is. Spiritually blind and Jesus, by his mercy, opened our eyes and he gave us spiritual eyes to see the, the Bible says he called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And it's hard to keep that to yourself. When you when you know that you were blind once spiritually and, and you've been called out of darkness, you've been called into his marvelous light. You want to tell people what Jesus has done for you. So these guys tell everybody. 